Kia ora no koutou. Welcome to day two. I was going to say day two, afternoon two. That sounds a bit silly. Welcome back to day two. Um, afternoon for us here. And the next talk, I would it would be my pleasure to introduce, is from Micah Kennedy Stevens. So I will tell you a little bit about Micah now. Uh, so Micah Kennedy Stevens is seminary librarian at Lancaster Theology. Theological Seminary in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in the United States. She initiated the library's migration to Koha in December 2014 and actively seeks to integrate strategic planning for library and information services with open source adoption and development. Yes. Since migrating to Koha, Lancaster Theological Seminary has also adopted open source solutions for library guides, digital archives and exhibits, as well as digital asset management and internal records. Micah is a strong advocate for open source software and has enjoyed learning new skills and participating in the Koha community. Although often caught up with the work of doing open source, she writes about and presents on her open source experiences with some regularity. So it's my pleasure to say that Micah's just, no, Micah's has pre-recorded her talk and we're just about to start it. And the title of the talk is A Patron, a Librarian and a Developer Walk Into a Bar. The conversations and relationships that fuel Koha development. Thank you, Micah. Hello, Koha community. Good afternoon to those gathered in Wellington, New Zealand. And greetings to all those who are gathered virtually for COACON 20. Koha community. My name is Good Micah Kennedy Stevens. I'm the seminary Zealand. librarian and, and associate professor of theological bibliography Koha. at Lancaster Theological Seminary in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, United States. The title of my presentation is A Patron, a Librarian, and a Developer Walk Into a Bar. In English speaking American culture, this sounds like the setup for a joke. So if you saw the title of my presentation and have been eagerly anticipating a stand-up comedy routine, I'm afraid you might be a little disappointed. My topic today focuses on the conversations and relationships between patrons, librarians, and developers that fuel Koha development. Who are we? How do we form and nurture our relationships? And how might our conversations inspire and empower us to continue developing Koha, advancing it beyond the robust ILS it has grown into over the past 20 years? I'd like to start by unpacking and defining these three types of Koha users that make up the Koha community. Patrons are our library users. They are the ones who most often interact with the OPAC side of Koha. This is where they search the catalog, request materials, check the status of their account, and more. Although they interact with Koha through the OPEC interface, a patron's experience of Koha extends deep into the inner workings of the database and the code surrounding it. Librarians are arguably some of Koha's heaviest users. They interact with both the OPEC and staff client interfaces. They are creating and editing metadata, searching and retrieving information about items and patrons, managing borrowing permissions, system settings, and much, much more. They teach patrons how to navigate Koha while maintaining collections, so that library users always find that special book, journal, or video that answers their question or provides much needed recreation. Developers keep Koha running. They continually write and rewrite code to eliminate bugs and further enhance the system. They package files, maintain the releases, and keep the documentation current. Developers also include a cadre of data specialists, support personnel, and educators who implement Koha installations and train librarians. While I've described these three types of Koha users separately, I'm illustrating them here with overlapping circles. That's because folks in the Koha community 
don't neatly fit under one role or another. For example, a developer may also be a patron, and a librarian may also be a developer. Within this open source community, there is a fluidity between these roles, and that's part of our success. Perhaps it might be more helpful to think about the distinction between patron, librarian, and developer as a difference in point of view or perspective on Koha. When donning one of these hats, so to speak, we see Koha in a certain way. The patron experience of searching through catalog data in the OPAC is different from that of the librarian, who might be using one of several different types of searches in the staff client, or perhaps executing a SQL report. And this experience is still even more different from that of the developer, who is checking plaque logs after search queries are executed and analyzing how those queries are parsed by the search engine. These are very different lenses through which we interact with Koha, yet any one of them by itself is insufficient for fully understanding Koha. All three, along with the infinite number of blended perspectives that are possible around this continuum, are needed in order to keep Koha development moving forward to meet the needs of libraries and their patrons in the mid-21st century. Building relationships with one another based on our connection to Koha is what fuels Koha development. When I'm talking about building relationships, though, I want to be very clear that I'm not talking about relating to one another through a series of transactions. While we do interact with one another each time a patron checks a book out or a librarian submits a bug to Bugzilla, building relationships runs deeper than these transactional exchanges. To build relationships with one another, whether in the Koha community or another type of community, means that we must be open to transformation. It is not possible to meet a new person, learn about them, listen to their perspective, and walk away from that encounter without being changed in some way. When attuned to building relationships in a positive manner, we open ourselves up to transformational exchanges. Conversations about how each of us sees and uses Koha that provides space for innovation and collaboration. Positive relationship building takes special attention. It doesn't happen by itself. Sometimes it flows naturally out of a particularly special group dynamic, but most times it is something that we must be intentional about. As a library director, this is something that I've made central to the mission and vision of the library I serve. Over the past six years, I've seen that positive relationship building with patrons and library vendors needs these three qualities. First, respect. Mutual respect and acknowledgement of diverse and different perspectives is a must. It is a recognition that one perspective or set of experiences is not valued more highly than another. From this foundation of respect, we gain insights into one another's experiences and situations, and we're able to feel empathy for one another. Second, engagement. When building and maintaining positive relationships as a community, we must remain engaged. This means giving our attention to one another and to the work at hand. It also means reaching out to one another, taking notice of the silences and absences, and following up with kindness and encouragement. Third, dialogue. We have to both talk to one another and listen to one another. Listening is perhaps more important than speaking. This is how we stay informed about each other's experiences, needs, challenges, and ideas. It is a way of communicating that is invested in understanding one another. There are probably more qualities that could be added to this list, 
And there are probably sociologists and psychologists who have studied this far more deeply than I have and who could probably speak much more eloquently on how to build relationships and community. As a librarian and a practitioner, reflecting on, back on what's worked and what hasn't worked for me, these are the three aspects of interpersonal interactions that stand out as key for the type of relationship building that supports community collaboration and development. By way of example, I'd like to share how building relationships and fostering communication with both patrons and developers has become an integral part of library operations and planning at Lancaster Theological Seminary. It started with the development and implementation of what I've called an integrated library plan. Unlike a traditional strategic plan, our integrated library plan operates on an iterative cycle of planning and assessment that does not have a defined end date. Out of conversations among staff and in facilitated conversations with patrons and other stakeholders, we started by defining the library's mission and vision. Our work is organized into areas of operation, and each of these areas has a goal and strategic outcomes. Over the past five years since its full implementation, I've followed a schedule of monthly review and assessment. This cycle is informed by both observations of information behavior exhibited by our patrons and staff, as well as an analysis of emerging trends in the community we serve and in librarianship in general. This iterative review and assessment process allows me to recognize and incorporate emerging needs by making adjustments to our outcomes and goals. We've even revised our mission and vision resulting in a planning process that's both strategic and responsive, dynamic and engaged. A core component of the way in which I lead the library to be dynamic and responsive is staying connected to our patrons, not just collecting data about how they are using the library, but actually having conversations with them about what works and what doesn't, what is friendly about the library, and what is intimidating. I have funneled what we learn from our patrons into my involvement in the Koha community. Through the process of migrating to Koha in late 2014, it became clear that this was just the first step of many that the library needed to take toward greater online accessibility of our collections and electronic subscriptions. It was through developing a strong, positive relationship with our EBSCO account representative and the folks at Bywater Solutions that we felt confident enough to implement EBSCO Discovery Service through the new EDS API plugin for Koha in mid-2015. Similarly, in late 2016, I had data at hand and successfully made a case for implementing our first single sign-on authentication service, and past experience encouraged our early adoption of the Open Athens authentication plugin for Koha in 2017. Seasoned early adopters at this point, our library was recruited to participate in an early adoption program for Koha upgrades, and then later to become the first Bywater Solutions partner to implement Elasticsearch for Koha. Keep in mind, that we are a very small library without a dedicated systems librarian. It was the relationships and the open communication with developers that were so crucial in every step of our library's growth and ability to improve and enhance accessibility for our patrons. A recurring topic I've seen at COHA conferences and meetings over the past few years is either encouragement to become more involved, lament over the obstacles that stand in the way of folks becoming more involved, or a combination of both. I think it's really important to acknowledge this. From the story I've just shared about my own library and how I've become involved in the COA community, you can see that it doesn't necessarily happen quickly, and certainly not instantly, as soon as a library adopts COHA. 
our visible energy in the community tends to focus on the how of getting involved. How to use Bugzilla. How to find information on the Koha Wiki. How to find and join the IRC channel. And perhaps the most elusive of all, how to make sense of Git. I don't want to diminish this. There are very real learning curves to each of these tools we use for Koha development. But in addition to the learning curve barrier, I believe there are deeper, innate human responses we must overcome when faced with the challenges of uncertainty and unfamiliarity. Librarians see this almost daily when patrons resist asking for reference assistance or show trepidation while simply entering the library. Therefore, it should come as no surprise when librarians and interested library patrons exhibit similar behavior, hesitation, resistance, avoidance, fear, when presented with an opportunity to become more involved in the Koha community. Intentionality about building relationships and fostering good communication can help. Librarians do this for patrons when they exchange pleasantries at the circulation desk or on the phone, and when they promote the library's collections and services to the community. The terms Wayfinder, Pathfinder, and Guide are often used synonymously for librarians and how they relate to patrons. Developers in the Koha community are doing the same thing for librarians and others by responding to questions with kindness and showing patience as we learn. It would have been all too easy for me to have been more like this girl in the photo after our library migrated to Koha, sitting alone with my questions, frustrations, and ideas for how to make the system more like what we needed. Thankfully, I never found myself alone like this. Building a relationship with first one person, then one group in the Koha community, led to another, and then another. It's those relationships that have made all the difference for me, and the reason why I'm inspired to continue paying it forward as a member of the Koha community. It feels more than a little disjointed to be delivering this talk on the conversations and relationships that fuel Koha development in a pre-recorded video for a hybrid in-person and virtual conference that I will be watching through a streaming link over a distance of more time zones than I can count. I am missing not being gathered with you in New Zealand, not meeting you over meals and during breaks, not hearing where you're from and what you've been doing with Koha. Developing and nurturing relationships throughout the continuum of Koha users, patrons, librarians, and developers is especially challenging right now during this time of global pandemic. However, with these challenges are yet more opportunities for creative engagement and connection as a community. At my own library, I'm finding that we need to be more intentional about reaching out to our patrons and doing so in a way that uses a variety of different methods, including some we've never used before. It is important to find alternatives to those casual chance encounters that we used to take for granted before closures and restrictions arose in an effort to maintain public health. Each of you have your own experiences of COVID-19 and are seeing new and different needs where you are in the places, in your places of work and in your local communities. Let's share these and listen to one another. And perhaps in the process, we'll discover new avenues to explore for COA development. In closing, I'd like to remind us of who we are. We're an open source community that is 20 years strong and growing, committed to collaboration and the development of Koha as a robust ILS. Especially now in the midst of a global pandemic, 
healthy communication practices and positive relationship building are vital to ongoing development that seeks to meet the needs of Koha users now and into the mid 21st century. This takes respect, engagement, and dialogue at every level, from the individual patron, through the library staff, and to the Koha developers and support teams. I want to encourage all of us to be open and willing to be transformed by our interactions with one another, because ultimately, this is how we will continue to move forward, improving Koha and libraries worldwide. Thank you so very much for your attention. I'd like to extend a special thanks to the conference host, the organizers, and the sponsors for making it possible to present virtually. I welcome your thoughts and feedback. My email address is on the screen, and further information about me is available in the conference program. Thank you.